welcome ladies and gentlemen this is Sanya Academy today we teach on understanding international relations uh, before going to the detail of this lesson I would like to remind you to subscribe like share and comment on this video and also become a member to Sanya Academy this Academy is dedicated to provide an information knowledge and uh, a necessary input for students in addition to uh, knowledge that is being provided in the class so i dare you to become a family and also recommend to your friends today as i just tried to inform you we are going to talk about understanding international relations and this dynamic and important wallet today we have become interconnected and the world is really globalized so we are going to talk about understanding international relations so what is to mean by international relation how can the definition for international relation help us to grasp and comprehend the detailed information and knowledge about international relations so let us start from the definition. International relations can be defined as a political activities and as aspects of interactions among two or more states. Basically, international relations is all about interaction. It's all about inter interdependence. It is all about working together. So, it is a political activity. Uh, some scholars even say international relation is a political science a child of political science so in this case politics activities that states work together or interact in is an international relation so any relation any political activity that involves two and more states is international relation it has to be beyond the border of states it should be taken in the international arena this interaction usually takes place between entities that exist in different parts of the world so states and actors in different parts of the world come together to interact with each other so it could be interactions between people groups firms associations parties and non-governmental international organizations uh, previously international relation was considered to be the mandate of the state especially for the emergence of modern states and following the cold war politics it was seen as a mandate of the state and the state is only actor in the international system but due to the expansion of political activities and beyond the control of the state today international relations has become and also involved non-state actors like multinational organizations international NGOs and international governmental organizations however this international relation has both direct and indirect implications on political relations of each state when they undertake interactions in terms of economy culture technology technical expertise and or diplomacy this interaction has its own implication and influence on the politics of a nation so for example uh, any interaction in international trade import and exports of goods and services have an impact on the politics of a country any issue that affects more than two countries that affects more than two countries fall under the scope of international issues if the issue is the concern of two and more states and these countries are affected by that issue then it is an international issue so as a field of study the national relation attempt to explain the interaction of the state in the global interest system 
What is to mean by global interstate system? Global interstate system is a grand system in which every states are pegged and also interact with each other. Uh, multilateral uh, organizations like United Nations, uh, like WTO, IMF, World Bank, World Health Organizations, and other intergovernmental organizations are considered to be interstate system. The global system, international system by itself, is a giant interactions and, and, and spheres in which states are expected to be uh, interacting. This is uh, why international relations is expected to study the interaction of the states. So, in terms of economy, in terms of culture, in terms of security, in terms of peace, and international trends. The states are expected to involve in this interstate system, what we call international system. This is uh, why international system is very important to understand because it is all about global issues. It is all about each and every activity that affects the whole grand system. If the international system is not working properly, states are not going to be beneficiaries of the system. So in this case, international relation is there to deal which issue should be concerned and pay much attention to. So in this case, studying international relation is very important. So studying international relation enables students and professionals to better comprehend the information they receive daily from newspapers, televisions, and radios. In our daily activities, using different outlets, whether it is mainstream media or social media, we are regularly accessing information about events happening in different parts of the world. We are grasping information regarding international issues about wars, about terrorism, about human rights abuse about democracy, about interstate interactions, international trade, business issues, technology development, and so many of them we access daily. But these are not enough for us to have an understanding about international relations. This studying the science and discipline of international relations helps students and professionals to have more understanding about those issues they hear and those issues they receive through mainstream and social media. This helps us to be the actor, to be the actor, the participant in the international system. Uh, as we know, the world is interconnected in different ways. There are so many ways of interconnections that the, the world is interconnected. Uh, geographically, humans are interconnected, states are interconnected, intellectually, in terms of knowledge and understanding, we are interconnected and socially. So we need to understand this grand system to make it better for humans to gain more advantage from this interaction. That is why we need to study international relations. That is why international relations is very important. So the study of international relations for the first time uh, was uh, begun in 1798 by English political philosopher Jeremy Bentham. By then, this subject, this discipline, was considered to be as a branch of the study of law, philosophy, and history. It, is, it was not that much political. It was not political. It was not talking about diplomacy, rather it was considered to be branch of law, branch of philosophy and history. But following the World War I, an academic activity was emerged to understand the fear of war, especially that devastated most part of Europe. They wanted to evaluate the impact of the First World War. The first university that chaired international relations was the University of Florence in 1919, uh, basically two centuries later, 
uh, despite this, there is no accepted way of uh, understanding and definition of international relation by the time. And people who are trying to define this international relation uh, based on their understanding and the individual approach. Events that happens at the global level, such as international conflict, international conferences on global warming, international crime, play a significant and fundamental part in the study of international relations. So when events of this kind happens in the world, this gives clue for scholars of international relations to state what sort of impacts are there as a result of these conflict crimes and diseases and environmental causes. International relations then help us to reach on the conclusion how to take collective approach to this addressing these problems and issues. Then uh, we have to focus on this. We have to help the world to become, to take united front against international issues affecting every state in the system. Here we, we need to understand that we cannot exempt ourselves from events happening in the international system. International relations and also international politics is very important to the development of a person as well as the development of a nation or organization. Participation in international relations and politics is inescapable. We cannot escape. Status cannot escape. Organizations, individuals, peoples cannot escape from participating in international relations and international politics. So, no individual, people, nation or state can exist in isolation from this grand system and be the master of this destiny. That is why globalization is very important to handle the global issues. Due to globalization, this world international system has become or like a village, we say. So this has brought everything at our door, at our hand. So we can simply access it. What is going on in another world directly affects us. For example, you can take the case of current Russia and the Ukraine war. All, almost all of the world is the victim of this war. So there are legal and political as well as social differences. When we compare with domestic politics and law, there is a difference between domestic politics, domestic law, and international politics and international law. So we need to be reminded this while dealing with international relations because if we have complete understanding of international relations, then we can fully plan and carry out our domestic law activities. So what differences are there? There are many, but we are simply touching some differences. Domestic laws, politics. On the right side, there is international law and international politics. When we see domestic laws and domestic politics, they are generally obeyed. The government is the actor in this case. If these laws and politics are not generally obeyed by the citizens of that country, the police and the court system in that country enforce sanctions, punishments, limitations, and also accountability is determined. So everyone in that country take responsibility for obeying the laws and live according to the political dictation of that country. The second one, the government has a monopoly on the legitimate use of forces. The government is capable and also has legitimate right to use forces in terms of break of the law and order. So the government has police force, the government has military, the government has laws that helps it all in that system. The government has amended the law and legal ground to use forces in case it is needed. So the government has 
a monopoly. People share the same loyalty to the government, despite the difference they have. Despite the difference they have in politics, culture, understanding, and also knowledge differences, people are expected to share the same loyalty. Remember, there is a difference between the system and the party. Uh, most of the time, people equate government with party. Party is association that is organized by some group of people with their own plan and political outlook. The government system is different from that. It is a system that is combined of the organs that make laws, that implement laws and interpret laws. So the government is not party and the party is not the government. But through election, parties may become to hold the government power. That is it. On the other hand, when we look at international law and politics, number one, international law rests on competing legal systems. There are domestic legal systems and political systems that compete with their own respective interests in the international system and also there is no common enforcement system. So states do not uniformly apply international law in their domestic spheres, in their domestic politics. There is a difference in this case in terms of implementation because each and every state that participate in that system have their own national interest. Every one of them come together to realize their national interest. So, if that international law go against the, in, the, the, the national interests of that state, they are obliged to not accept that international law. They cannot implement it. No one has a monopoly of force, use of force as international law. The international law and also the international system has no government that has the legitimate authority to use force to maintain laws and orders. There is no ordered government. There is no central organ that is responsible to maintain the interaction between states in this grand system. So, international politics has often been interpreted at the realm of self-help. Each and every state in that system are trying to help themselves by maintaining their own national interests. They need to be and also work to be the beneficiary of the international system. They become member of certain international organizations as far as that organization is ready to maintain their national interest. In terms of rejections, in terms of that organization is going against their national interest, the state opposes it. They oppose it, they protest. For example, the United Nations is the multilateral organization that is supposed to serve each and every state despite their differences. But if any definition that takes place, any de decision that takes place, in that grand organization go against the interests of one country, then that country protests. That is why we say the international system has no organ and responsible government to use legitimate force. So then status do it. Status first consider their benefit from the international relation. What sort of benefit? what sort of achievement and advantage they get from that international system. So they be a member of organizations, international and multilateral organizations, just to help themselves, not for other states. There is no uh, free service and there is no Samaritanism in that uh, activity. 
It is also accepted that some states are stronger than other states in terms of economy, military power, and even technological advance. There is a difference among states in terms of power. There is a difference. There are powerful states, there are weaker states. So, in this system, most of the time, powerful states need to use weaker states for their own national interests. So, they are divided peoples that do not share the same reality. People disagree about what seems to just and also legitimate order and just that's the difference. For example, the United States of America is echoing that democracy is the best political system that each and every state has to follow and also maintain the best political system for humanity. But other states are protesting. For example, you can take China, Russia, North Korea, and others, and Arab wallet. They protest against democracy. There's a difference. There's a disagreement. There is no common loyalty among the states sharing this international system. This uh, is a difference. As the globe has become interconnected, just we are interconnected in terms of everything we say, domestic issues have become international issues and international issues have become domestic issues. So this determines how much we are closer to each other. Example, any issue that happens in one country directly affected the whole system. Pandemics, environmental issues, terrorism, drug and human trafficking, conflict wars. These are sometimes national issues, but they simply become international issues. Let me give you a, a detail about pandemic. Recently, we saw that the coronavirus started in the coronavirus started in China, one city and province, one province. Then, by the time it was considered to be national issue, that means it was only the uh, Chinese government that was trying to handle the case of coronavirus. But soon after, it became international issue, started to cross the border. So it became an international issue. So coronavirus is not no more the issue of Chinese government. It has become the issue of global states and people. Environmental issues, for example, climate change, terrorism, drug, and these are, have already become international issues. So uh, studying this international relation is very important to know issues about uh, issues of the world to understand more how things are going on at the global level. So, why students and professionals study international relations? There are some answers to this. Some studies international relations because they are interested in the global events, world events. But studying international relations goes on. So they later come to understand that studying about international relations is all about knowing the role that your country, your region, people, and also even yourself has in the international system. So gradually, these people understand they have to recognize how their own state workers and region even the issues. And also, they come to understand the happening at the global level beyond journalistic coverage. So there is a need to analyze current events and the why, where, what, and where of the events just to understand what factors led them to uh, achieve particular outcome and also what consequences happened due to those events. So we have to understand. For example, today we see different uh, natural disasters happening in different parts of uh, the world. In the United States of America, hurricanes, in Pakistan, in other countries, in China, 
mudslide take place and also the world is, is experiencing huge disaster in terms of natural uh, occurrences and also man-made occurrences like happenings like war, conflict, migrations and others are uh, some of the issues that we need to realize so as to understand how our nation and country is expected to respond and we as a policy uh, maker and also scholars has to get in touch with this even this to avoid the wrong uh, uh, damage they produce as a result and also take precautionary, precautionary measures. So, studying international relations provides necessary tools to unlike these events that are taking place and also to help us get deeper understanding about these problems. Scholars and practitioners in international relations use concepts and theories to make their study more manageable. So, mm, we cannot understand idea without a concept and without a theory. We need theoretical justifications and conceptual understanding of issues taking place at the international level. For example, terrorism. What is the view of terrorism from international political theories? From the theory of political science, from the theory of international relations. So what responses are there? So we need to understand our substance theories because we cannot manage these theories, these issues without having theories and concepts. However, when we make of our study regarding international relations, we uh, encounter some complications because um, this was co complicated due to there is a major philosophical disputes and uh, about the fundamental nature of uh, international relations. Um, there is a theoretical debate, if not only philosophical debate, there is a theoretical debate. Uh, in terms of philosophical debate, let us see the debate between John Locke and Thomas Hobbes in terms of how they see the human relation, how they see human relation. The Hobbesian versus Locke state of nature in the 17th century has had great philosophical debates among scholars of international relations and also the realist versus idealist or liberalist versus debate regarding the understanding and definition of international relations in 20th century at the prominent one. Hobbes said that in his writing of 1651, he said the state of the society is in a continual field in danger of violent death and the life of man was solitary, poor, nasty, brutish and short. So the interaction between human society according to the writing of Thomas Hobbes was hostility. The master of human destiny was the other. So, no one was having smooth and positive relationship. So, it was very competitive and this symmetrical. So, this had its own impact on the understanding. Today, realists say the international system is a system of self-help and there is no opportunity for cooperation. So, the powerful state dominates the international system. That is the reality we had in the 1950s during the Cold War, during the Second World War, during the World, First World War. So the world is not a better place for everyone equally. The powerful state survives. This is the realist perspective. So it depends on the philosophical outlook of Thomas Hobbes. The second concept was, uh, so, uh, that says uh, there's a difference in 
and the sunning of Tom's hopes and to John Locke. John Locke, on the other hand, had an optimistic view of human relation that says sociability was the strongest bond between men. They were having a social life that was very positive and also had smooth interactions. Men were equal, sociable, and free because they were governed by international, uh, by, by nature, natural law. The natural law gave them equal opportunity, so there is no reason for them to fight each other, so it was the best they, they were having, and they have good relationship with each other. So cooperation is possible. So this is more idealistic and liberalistic view, which had influenced the emergence of liberal theory or ideal theory. So this influence, influence hopes and Locke still to pursue divided approach to study the nature of international relations. So that is why realism and liberalism are having two different approaches in understanding these international relations. Uh, basically, international politics is predominantly concerned with the art of achieving group ends or group achievement, group goal, mutual goal against the opposition of the group. That is why we have, why the world experienced blocks in the Cold War. There were two blocks, the socialist block and the capitalist block. These blocks were acting against each other. The Eastern Bloc had a socialist philosophy and the Western Bloc had social capitalist ideology. So capitalists were working to downgrade the socialists and socialists was, uh, were doing the same. So these other groups were uh, fighting just to dominate the international system. But this limited by the will and ability of other groups to impose their demands. So some others, for example, in Africa, non-aligned movements were taking place. This was basically influenced by the politics of two sides, but they were they, they chose to remain non-aligned. So this is how it worked. If physical force were to be used to maintain group in this or group objectives to resolve every disagreement, that would uh, address the global war, there would be intolerance and the existence of world's population. So the world would be continuously under war. So the society was, would not prosper and every human being would be suspicious of every other human. This is the theory and the political uh, ideology of Thomas Hobbes. Every person were suspicious of each other. So international politics is also about maintaining international order, but that order has to remain in an African world. So the question is how international order can be maintained in the anarchical international system, the system in which there is no central order, central law, government, and organ agent that rule the world. So the states are trying to maintain international order in the anarchical system. That is why we see wars happening. That is why we see different issues happening in the world. So international relations and international politics then has to take place. Agreement has to take place. Treaties, discussions, negotiations has to take place. That is why international relations and international politics is continually expanding, having it is uh, scope expanded. To appreciate this, one need to reflect on the multiplication of independence. In the international system, from year to year, age to age, the number of states is increasing. The world is continually expanding. For example, in the 80s, there were no international organizations, but now there are dozens of them, there are thousands of them working at the global level. Then government organizations are taking place, and also international organizations are there to carry out their uh, international business. During the time of inception of the United Nations, only 52 states signed the chapter in 19. 
1945. But today, the United Nations has more than 192 states as a So there has also been continuing uh, growth of governmental and international services. Services are taking place, expanding. Governmental and international services are taking place. Organizations are also uh, trying to meet the daily demand of uh, people, NGOs, and charities that are there to help. The ordinary citizens are also continually increasing. So, interdependence implies that people, businesses, and organizations rely on each other in different places for ideas, goods, and services. This interdependence cannot be maintained without international relations. So, international relations is a key field, or it is a key to maintain interdependence and also working together. That is why we need to understand the international relation. So understanding international relation help us to comprehend more about issues taking place in the international system beyond media coverage. This is all about today's lesson. Understanding international relation. I hope you have got some clue, some understanding about international relation. I would like to remind you to like, subscribe, share and also uh, comment on this video and hit the notification bell to get notified every time new video is uploaded to Sanyi Academy.